stand on our feet. The choir says, help me lift him up. Did anybody come and lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. How to reach the masses, it says. Jesus gave the key. He says, if I be lifted up, he says, I'll draw all men. We come to lift Jesus up this morning. We praise him for the name that he has given us to call on, a name that is above every name. We've got a name to fight whatever it is that the enemy comes at us with. That's how good God is to us. He doesn't leave us on the battlefield without a weapon to fight the enemy with. And so we come to magnify him, give him glory and praise this morning. Psalm 106 says, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And verse 2 says, Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord, and who can show forth his praises? I mean, I know God has been good to us. He does mighty things every day, things that we can see. But what we want to praise him for is the things that he does behind the scenes. Hallelujah. The things that he has not allowed to happen. It says if the Lord hadn't been on our side, that the enemy would have swaddled us alive. But it says God didn't allow him to do it. So he praised God for what he didn't allow to happen to us this morning. We've got a right to praise him. Don't let the enemy condemn you and tell you to shut up your mouth. Hallelujah. We've got a right to praise the Lord just because what Jesus did for us. He paid a high price for us. And so we ought to praise him this morning and give him glory and praise. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We come to give you the highest praise this morning and just thank you for who you are in our lives. And we do praise you for your mighty acts. We Thank you. While we can't see it, we know that the sun is yet still shining. And we praise you for this morning that all of nature is doing what you created it to do. And so we stand this morning to give you glory and praise. We were created for your glory and for your praise. So we come with the fruit of our lips. Declare that you are great and greatly to be praised. That there is no God like you. There is no God above you, no God besides you. No God can do what you can do. And so we just want to thank you this morning. We praise you for the multitude of your blessings. We praise you for your daily benefits. It says you load us daily. Hallelujah with your benefits. So we just praise you this morning. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you that we are in our right mind. And so we come to praise you. God, we lift up those who are in the valley this morning, those who are suffering. God, we praise you that you said the Holy Spirit would come and be a comfort to them. We thank you that you do what you say you're going to do for those, God, who are yet sorrowing this morning. We join with them. Hallelujah. Calling on your name. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to grace them with your presence this morning in the name of Jesus that, God, you will hold them close. Hallelujah, that they will recognize that Jesus is still the hope of glory. Hallelujah, that your word says that you still got a peace that passes understanding, that you still got a joy unspeakable and full of glory. So we come standing on your promises this morning that you would do what you say you're going to do. We ask you to bless the pastor and the choir this morning that you would give them a holy boldness in your presence this morning to stand up and give your word, hallelujah, with clarity and with power, and that we will see signs, wonder, and miracles flowing in this place, hallelujah, as you move even among the earth, as all your churches are coming together, calling on your name, that you would manifest your presence, that you would show yourself powerful and mighty on behalf of your children. We bless you and praise you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen.
love you, Jesus. Nobody, nobody but you. Nobody, or nobody, nobody, or nobody, nobody, or nobody, nobody, or nobody, nobody. I love you, Jesus. Nobody, nobody but you. Nobody, nobody can love me. Nobody like you do. Nobody, or nobody, nobody, or nobody. When I was in trouble. Amen. Amen. Cross for nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. When I was in trouble, you came to my rescue. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. It is good to be here. Good to be in the presence of the Lord. It's good to be in the presence of the people of God. You look well. See the and the blessing upon you. Good to see um, my friend, Reverend Johnson, Jean Johnson, and family. Um, so Erica, you know you got to do well because she gave you a start. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good to see Alice and Tony from Georgia and others. And in this great singing group, I want to commend the praise and worship team. You have been doing double and triple duty since this time, maybe a couple of weeks ago. You stood strong and let God use you throughout the revival, and I thank God for you. And I know there must be a bone weariness in you somewhere that only the grace of God can give you the strength. I look back and I see these four generations of ruffins Amen. Amen. There's the grandmother, the daughter, the granddaughter, and the great-granddaughter. And Opal. Amen. That's my, that's my, that's, that's my Opal. You can't, you can't claim her. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Reverend Everett, and for all of you, it's good to see. Good to see Pastor Meritus and Sister Beal back in the house. I've been watching them on Facebook at the beach, kick, kicking their heels up like young bucks. Amen, 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 amen. Isn't God good? Um, let's look at... Uh, a little while today, Jeremiah chapter 12. I have, that's been in my mind for a while now, so we'll look at it a little bit. Jeremiah chapter 12, uh, text verse 5. It reads as follows. If you, if thou, this is King James Version. If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if the land of and in the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling or the thicket of Jordan? The uh, the um, ESV version says, If you have raced with men on foot, and they have wearied you, how will you compete with horses? 
And if in a safe land you're so trusting, what will you do in the thicket of the Jordan? Amen. This is God's answer to a question that Jeremiah poses to him in the opening of this 12th chapter. And so today I want to talk about God's answer to a complaining saint. This is God's answer to his prophet, Jeremiah. Amen. A question that he asked God. In fact, God appears to do what we say you should never do. Answer a question with a question. But how many know he's sort of famous at that? Amen. Asked a, but it's a tender question. If thou hast Jeremiah, run with the footmen, they have wearied thee. Then thou canst, how can thou contend with horses? If in a land of peace, where thou trustest, they wearied thee, then how will thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? That's the question for the 21st century church. We have had it easy for so long that we do not know what hard is. We have become fat, out of shape, weak, and fearful. I do not mean physically fat, but certainly emotionally weighted down and spiritually weak. God seemed to be saying in the text, and to us, something is missing. And he wants us to find out what that is. He's saying to us this morning, I have brought you to this moment in time. Uh, 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 in, In time to this place in your life, We should have been able to stand, but you cannot. Jeremiah, Daniel, I have worked to bring you to this moment in time. The moment of the fulfillment of your destiny. uh, To this place in your life where you should have been able to stand but you're fearful and feel you cannot. Something is missing. Tell us about something is missing. The text reveals at least three things needed to overcome this sense of weariness. First, there must be understanding. Second, there must be empowerment to the point where, where we come to the point where where. A God-ordained assignment cannot be accomplished under your own strength. There must be empowerment where we come to the knowledge that a God-ordained assignment cannot be accomplished under your own strength. We must first be brought to the place of total dependency. Every prop must be knocked out. Every leaning post moved. Every fallback on emergency thing must evaporate. We must be brought to the point, if it's a God-ordained assignment, we must be brought to the point where, 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 where we realize that human strength cannot accomplish the mission. Then third, standing in this, we must reach the point uh, where faith takes over, where we must have confidence to walk in the assignment you have been given. Jeremiah is being shaken in all of these areas. First, we must have an understanding of what's going on. There's a purpose in everything that God brings you through. First, we must have his empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And third, 
faith must be there or the confidence to walk in the assignment you have been given. If you don't believe you can do it, guess what? You won't. If you convince yourself it's too hard, then for you it's too hard. If you look at God-ordained assignments through natural eyes, they all are too hard. Amen. Because if you can accomplish them, George, in your own ability, then you really don't need God to do it. Somebody say amen. 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 So, so that's the question for the 21st century church. The prophet Daniel in a vision recorded in Daniel 7 verse 25 launches way ahead to the end time tribulation after the church has been raptured up and described the work of the Antichrist. Yeah. Reads like this, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. Watch this, and shall wear out the saints yeah. of the Most High yeah. and, and, and think to change times and laws and, and they the saints shall be given into his hand until a time and a times and the dividing of times. He shall speak blasphemous lies against not just you, but against the Most High. If you lie on God, amen, you don't have a chance, amen. And shall, watch this, watch this, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He is describing the tribulation period, a future event. We're not in that. Let me make that clear. But what we are experiencing, I believe, is a faint shadow or a brief type of what is to come. Let me say it again. His purpose will be what he does, his actions, and he shall wear out the saints of God, not sinners, but the saints of God. Many of the saints of God, the church of God, are worn out today. They appear to be exhausted and drained. People are tired, bone weary, physically, emotionally, and spiritually drained, just going through the motions. Daniel looked way ahead, and we find ourselves walking in this shadow and this type of something that will come when we've long since been raptured up. And he shall wear out the saints of God. That is the prophet Jeremiah's condition that God addresses here in our text in Jeremiah 12 and 5. He's saying to his prophet and to us in a loving, tender manner, if you cannot handle this, how can you handle what's coming? Oh, can I just say it in that? Now watch. He's not talking to your run of the mill. He's talking to his prophet. Jeremiah, had, Jeremiah would be the prophet during the reign of five kings. He called, God tells him in chapter one, Jeremiah, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I consecrated you to be a prophet. Y'all ain't hearing me. Let, let me. let me read what he says. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Jeremiah, our oh Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I'm only a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a youth, for to all whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, class the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, Jeremiah said. And the Lord said to me, behold, I put my words in your mouth. So I have set you this day over nations and kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build. At the time of the right, he's probably just 20 years old. 
When it came, this ain't, it just ain't old people getting wear it. Y'all ain't hearing me. Fact, fact, truth of the matter is, Dr. Bill, I think some of us older ones are holding up a little bit better. Y'all ain't hearing me. It's the, it's the younger seed that, that's getting wear. Now, watch, he said, he said, he said, I put my words in your mouth. Now, when the enemy attack you with weariness, lack of confidence, he's not after you. He's after what's been put in your mouth. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. And so he wasn't really after Jeremiah. He's after what God put in him uh, before he was born. Let, Let me help you. He's not after you. He's after what God put in you when you were born again. Somebody say amen in here. Mm, 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 mm. If you can't handle this, how can you handle what's coming? Let me just make this little footnote here. Where you are now is not where you are destined to be. Amen. God has got to work with you to get you to where your destiny is. Look look what it says. He said, said, if you can't handle this, how can you handle what's coming? But I must confess here, I do not know what's coming. I don't know if as a nation, if we will lose our republic or our democratic form of government to something more autocratic. I don't know if the rights of all will be protected or if only those of a precious few. I don't know or pretend to know if we will defeat COVID or what the next strain of the virus will be. I don't know what the near effects of climate change may be. I know it's a lot of talk about it. I don't know whether political and social economic unrest will erupt in chaos around the nation and the world. I just don't know. But in all likelihood, as we, have, as we move toward the end of the age, things will get worse. And this text here in Jeremiah speaks to us. If the time clock is right, then we can expect things to get progressively worse not progressively better. Y'all ain't hear me. But Paul sort of threw something out there. He said, where sin abounds, grace to much more. Y'all ain't hear me. Now, things may get worse, but you may get better. Y'all ain't hear me. And so, so, so if grace abounds, so if things get worse, if you let God work with you, you won't hardly know they're worse. Because you'll be getting better in proportion to how they are getting worse. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I thought I'd be about finished by now. If you have run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, Daniel, then how can you contend with horses? Daniel, if you're complaining about who ain't doing what now, Where so-and-so is. Y'all ain't hear me. What so-and-so is doing. What's the latest Trumpian thing going on? If you just all caught up into that, Daniel, if if you caught into that and they are worried you, how can you contend with horses? In fact, I see something else here that that may be just me, but in, in, in Jeremiah's era, Okay, he is preparing Judah, okay, to be overcome by the Babylonians, okay. The northern kingdom, Israel, is already in exile. And they didn't learn from that big sister. Somebody say amen in here. And so they're proceeding down the same path, and Jeremiah is giving warning after warning. But people do not hear them. And look, look what, and, and when, I see, when I see in this text, I see, if you can't, if you have run with a footman and they were at you, I see two types of military forces. Y'all ain't hear me. They had the, 
the 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 foot soldiers, yeah. which was the which was the 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 regiment, the foot soldiers, which which walked, but it was very laborious, very slow, but powerful. Now, if 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 the slow moving soldiers, uh, the cumbersome have, soldiers have 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 wear at you, then then how are you gonna deal with those on horses? Oh Lord, if in the land of peace, where thou trustest and wear at thee. If America, if Daniel, if Mount Nebo, yeah. there's a lot going on around the world. But there are no bombs raining down. Y'all ain't hear me. That, that's not war in the streets. There's a relative peace. But if in the land of peace, uh, where you trust us, that where is thee, then how will that do in the swelling Jordan? I looked in Joshua some time ago and said, in flood season. Lord have mercy. It, the Jordan overflows all its banks during the flood. Season. In the text, the nation of Judah was facing probable overthrow and deportation to a strange land. The prophet himself was experiencing a sense of spiritual, mental, and emotional burnout from the persecution of his fellow villagers, from Anathoth, and from the persecution of the wicked around him. His brethren, his, his family, his friends in the little town of Anathos, they mocked him. They persecuted him. They laughed at him. They, they hated him. Somebody say amen here. And all he's trying to do is tell them what thus says the Lord. Now, now, I want to point out something here. Some people don't have the ability to hurt you because you neither know them or care about them. But when it's your own village, you all in him. Those you grew up with, those you live with, those in the house you with, when they mock you, when they laugh you to scorn because of your faith in the word of God. You all ain't hearing me. I bet they'll send that goes old Jeremiah now. He's out of his head again. That, that he goes talking about some Babylon. What's a Babylonian? That, that he goes again. Somebody say man in here. And look over here, so-and-so is prospering, but, but what we find out is all the so-and-sos ain't prospering, only the wicked. That's sort of like today, isn't it? Jeremiah wanted Sheila to ask God a question. In our text, in our text of verse 5 is the beginning of God's answer to the question. In verse 1 of chapter 12, he says, Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with you of thy judgment. Why doeth the way of the wicked prosper, and why they all happy that deal treacherously? He asked the question that Asaph, the psalm leader in Psalm 73, asked the same question. And I, I want to tell you, and I imagine yeah. you and I have asked the same question from time to time. Yeah. If you're a news junkie, you watch it, you, you ask the question every day. Yeah. Lord, what have the wicked done today? Yeah. When will they get what's due them? Somebody, that's what Jeremiah is saying. God, I just got a question for you. I know you call me for this assignment, but but, but things are not measuring up, God. I, I'm doing all you asked me to do, and I'm going through hell. And these jokers living like the devil, they seem to be on easy street. God, in fact, Jeremiah got to the point where, Lord, I quit. And, Jer and Jeremiah, chapter by chapter, he said, I quit. I mean, did, you remember he said, I quit. He turned all my family again, I quit. But then he said that, that I tried to quit, but it was just like fire. Shut up in my bone. Now, now watch, watch, watch. Now, what was shut up in him? In chapter one, the prophetic mantle was shut up in him. The word, the assignment was shut up in him. He could not let it go until the assignment came out of his belly. Somebody say amen in here. Now, if the Lord have given you assignment, you may try to quit, but you can't quit until the fire 
Y'all ain't hear me. If you don't speak what's in you, that fire will destroy you on the inside. See, the deal is, there are times when I'm so tired, Bill, I said, I'm not, I don't feel like preaching anymore. Yeah. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. But, but then from the pits of my weakness, I, I feel a word <laughs> rise up in me. Somebody say amen. I feel a word rise up in me. And I know that when I release the word, my strength because it becomes as a heavy load until you deliver what God tells you to deliver. He, consent, he considered and he was right that the wicked could not, should not enjoy any prosperity unless God allowed it. The fruit they seemed to enjoy ultimately came from God in one way or the other. He said, if the wicked God are prospering, then they only prosper because you allowed it. Y'all didn't hear me. See, because if you didn't allow it, it couldn't be done. Look what it says in verse 2. Thou hast planted them, yea, thou have taken root. They ground, they, 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 they grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins or far from their soul. With their mouth they talk about you. But with their soul, they don't even act like they know you. Even though Jeremiah knows that God is right, he says that he personally wanted to ask some grievances. Anybody need to just talk to God about some stuff that you really ain't understand? He asked again, why the wicked have been doing so well without being punished? He wanted to see them punished. Y'all got some people you want to see punished too. Verse 3, like sheep at the slaughter. He asked God to kill the wicked. Y'all didn't hear me. And relieve the people suffering. God answers that if Jeremiah is tired from dealing with these wicked people, he's like someone who has been exhausted from racing with foot runners. So how can he compete when they're racing with horses uh, that his really wicked opponents come around him? These you think are wicked now. If you hang around for a while, y'all ain't hearing me. They, 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 they just rookies in wickedness. Somebody say amen here. There's a generation that's even more wicked than that generation. If you can't deal with the low hanging fruit, y'all ain't hearing me. How you can deal with the high hanging? These are several lessons we can learn from God's response to Jeremiah. First of all, Get this in your mind. Life is filled with challenges. No way around it. From the moment you're born, filled with challenges. In fact, you come into the world in turmoil and challenge. You're crushed in the birth canal. You come out, you got a film all over you that's got to be wiped from you. And the doctor spanks you on the rear. From the moment you come into the world, you come in crying. Somebody say amen in here. And I got every belief that you may leave here crying. But in between, God is able to accomplish great work through you. Can can I say it again? You come in crying and you often go out crying. But that's joy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Unspeakable joy. Now. Now, now, watch this, watch this, watch this, joy. We cry, but we rejoice. Rejoice and require. Y'all ain't hearing me. Sometimes we weep, other times we celebrate. In the end, the joy overshadows the weeping. Present circumstance is a challenge, yet a greater one waits. Y'all ain't hearing me. But a greater one works, waits. Present predicament. Uh, prepares you for future challenges. The closer we come to God's plan, purpose for our lives, the greater the challenge uh, to be overcome. The ultimate, watch this, the ultimate goal of the challenges we meet in life is to bring us to the point of total dependence upon God. Yes. Y'all are hearing me. The acknowledgement that without him, yes. I can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. Jeremiah had to be brought 
to the point of total dependency. Y'all ain't hearing me. See, the successive challenges and the struggles are crafted by the very hand of God to bring us to the place of total dependence upon him. Like Jeremiah said, the wicked couldn't prosper unless the Lord didn't, unless the Lord did it, didn't do it. Why? said, you and I wouldn't go through a challenge unless the Lord. Everything that you're dealing with, the hand of God crafted it for his own glory and honor. Y'all ain't hear me. Whatever you're dealing with, God is using it to mow you to a point where he can get out of you that which he deposit in you at your new birth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes it's hard to let go what God has given you to give out to out of yourself. God answers. God answers us. God answers us in our truth. Well, present circumstance is a challenge, yet a greater one waits. If you think this is tough, God, so wait until you get to, you, you, you in math 101, wait, wait until you get to the 200 series. <laughs> you, you ain't even seen algebra yet. You're still doing one plus one, two plus two. See, part of our, part of, even in school, it gets what? Each year, it gets a little bit, you, you move from doing your colors. Fact, fact. In fact, when I was going to school, we didn't have to learn none of that before we got to the first grade. Now, now you got to know your colors, your numbers, your alphabets, a little bit of reading because, because when you, you got to get that running. Somebody say amen in here. See, see many of us are still working on our colors. We, we, we're still trying to color between the lines. We, we, we're still working on, we're working on arithmetic, not mathematics. We're still reading the, the C. Dick Run books. Y'all... Let C spot do this. But, but, but God is moving us, y'all ain't hear me, to the point where, where we, we, can, we can understand him better. Lord have mercy. See, see, Jeremiah, God knew what Jeremiah had to deal with. He knew that Jeremiah, even though he had been faithful, this is not all of it, Jeremiah. He knew that Jeremiah would have to spend a night in the stockade at Jerusalem. Jeremiah 21 and 3. He knew they had to endure confinement in a cistern right. like Joseph in Jeremiah 38. Uh-huh. And he knew he had to be in, endure imprisonment in the court of the God uh-huh. like Joseph. Somebody say amen. Uh-huh. If you complain about simple things yeah. God has already asked you to do, yeah. then you lack spiritual strength yeah. to do the thing he's calling you to do. Amen. Oh Lord have mercy. If you, if you complain about simple things God has already asked you to do, then you lack spiritual strength to do the thing he's calling you to do. If you, if you complain about having to go to church, if you complain about singing in the choir, if you complain it's about not your day to usher, if you complain about having to visit the sick, then you're not ready for whatever next spiritual thing he wants you to do. If you can't mop the floor, y'all ain't hearing me. You're not ready to do anything else. The struggle, the struggle, the struggle to endure present predicament conditions you to meet a greater future challenge. Y'all ain't hearing me. The struggle to endure present, anybody enduring here, that's a good struggle. Conditions you to meet a greater future challenge. Why? In the lesser challenge, we learn to draw near to God and put our trust in him that we may survive the greater challenge. I learned a long time ago that God will take care of me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I learned that while praying now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord if I die, I pray the Lord my soul to keep because I prayed it like I really meant it. Somebody say amen. And every day, Tess, I woke up in the morning, I said, God must have kept me. Amen. And in fact, I got so addicted to it as a child, I was afraid to fall asleep. Y'all ain't hear me. See, see, in the simple challenges, you learn to draw near to God and put your trust in him that you may survive the overwhelming tide. 
You remember David, don't you? When he's asked why he thought he could defeat Goliath, he says something to the effect, not exact quote, I've slayed a bear. He helped me do that. And I've slayed a lion. And he helped me do that. And I believe the same God that enabled me to slay that lion with this slingshot. The same God that allowed me to rip a lion, a kid from a lion's mouth. Is the same God that will enable me to bring down this uncircumcised giant and cut his head off. See, he learned to trust God in the simple things before he had to deal with the giant things of life. It was God that brought you through your simple stuff. If you can ever realize it was God that brought you through your simple stuff, you'll believe that he's with you in the big stuff. Now, now, successive challenges cause us to examine our own deeper need for God. See, we put up some front in the early challenges. I, I can tell you what Marlene needs to be more effective. I can tell you what the deacon board needs to work on to be more effective. I can tell you what somebody else needs to do. But successive challenges in your life cause you to examine your own deeper need for God. The effect of God's response to his prophet had the effect of the prophet examining his own weakness and drawing him to yet complete dependence on God. Have you got there yet where your life struggle is making you question you only stand with God yourself? Have you prayed some prayer that didn't seem to come through? but you're still standing and you don't know how you're standing. I, I believe it. Have you gotten there yet where, where, where your struggle have made you examine what is my true relationship with God? What weakness am I still struggling to deal with yet? What, what causes me to not completely depend upon God? What thing more does it have to remove from me for I can stand in his glory and his might? The place of complete dependence of God, Jeremiah seems to have been a little afraid of the people among whom he dwelt. Uh-huh. They, had, they had, I said, per- persecuted him, yeah. mocked him uh-huh. at times, laughed him to scorn. But God tells him to make his faith like flint yeah. and not concern himself with that. Yeah. You got to step out your comfort zone. Yeah. Sometimes get away from your mom and daddy's house. And let the Lord work with you one-on-one. If thou art afraid, let me tell you this. I, I love my father uh, as much as anybody could love a father. But I've got to make a confession. When God took him home in an accident at age 55, I thought I would fold my tent up. Because if God killed my godly daddy, then, then, then what kind of God is that? I felt like Jeremiah. As I set out on the hillside looking at the sunset with my baby when she's just a three-year-old, I, I looked at her and I said, God, there's nothing fair about you. Yeah. My daddy was a man of faith. Yeah. He treated mama right. Yeah. You know, he, he, he treated his children right. Yeah. When I had a problem in the military from the other side of the coast, I called him. Yeah. And daddy got in touch with you. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. And I just went on to work yeah. knowing that you were taking care of it. But now, God, you killed my godly father. Y'all are hearing me. And you know what God said? He didn't say anything. He didn't answer me. He didn't say anything. He let me sit there in my pity party with tears streaming down my face. But my crisis in my life didn't stop. As soon as I got back to my base, another crisis came. But I wanted to get to the phone, Gene, but Daddy wasn't there. Y'all ain't hearing me. But something moved in my spirit. Daddy may not have been there, but I believe daddy's God. He's still where he was when daddy called on him. And you know what, y'all? In the midst of that, I made daddy's God. Now, I belong to the church, all right. Y'all ain't hearing me. I was an officer in the church, but, but you know what? He wasn't really my God. I was depending on somebody else's faith, but... But when God took my father 
and made me make him my father. Can I get a witness in here? When God took my leaning post, it made me make him. A, and that's what he's telling Jeremiah. Jeremiah, forget about all the stuff going around with you. He's telling me in the next verse, he said, you can't depend on your brothers. You can't depend on the crop. Only thing you can depend upon is me. Y'all ain't hearing me. God never calls us, Herbert, to contend with horsemen until he has trained us by the lesser strain of how to deal with, with footmen. He never brings us to the swelling Jordan until he's conditioned us to stand in its waters. He never, he says the swelling Jordan, Jordan, Jordan always overflows all of its banks at harvest time. You see, the deal is the region around the Jordan was also like a jungle growth. In the midst of the thickest, that's where the lair of lions were. So, so he never exposes us to the lion until he's empowered us to deal with the devil and all of it. Y'all ain't hearing me because he is like a roaring lion. If, if when he comes in like a roaring lion to you, God only lets him come because he knows he fixed you on how you can deal with the lion. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. He never lets anything come to you on the greater side that he haven't conditioned you on the lesser side to be ready to deal with. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. He God closes out this discussion with Jeremiah in verses 6 through 17. But I want to close it out with verses 10 through 11. It's a chilling rebuke in my mind to, to the status of ministry. Let me see what he tells, after he tells Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you can't trust any brothers. And Jeremiah, the crop's not going to produce. He tells him in, he tells him in uh, verse 10 why everything is like it is. He said, many shepherds. King James said, many pastors. I'm calling my own number now. Many shepherds, many pastors, Dr. Bill, have destroyed my vineyard. They trampled down my portion. They made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They made it a desolation. Desolate, it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate. But no man lays it to heart. Upon all the desert heights in the desert, verse 12, destroyers have come from the sword of the Lord, devoured from one end of the land to the other. He's saying this, I'm devouring because my pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They've trampled down my portion. They've run roughshod over my people. They've robbed the widow and the poor. Somebody say amen. They made my vineyard a desolation. And now I'm going to destroy them. Somebody say amen in here. But, but then he closed out. He said, he said, but good God, am I, if they will learn to worship me like they worship the Baals. Y'all ain't hearing me. Then I will, I will turn things around. If we learn to worship God like we worship the shipyard. If we learn to worship God like we worship the power plant. If we learn to worship God like we worship our families, then if they can worship God as they used to worship Baal, he'll have mercy on them. But if they don't, he will tear them up and throw them out. God's answer to complaining saints God's answer. There's a dynamic at play. Part of the weariness that we have is the work of the devil. For he had word, he had worn out the saints of God. 
We've got to learn to rebuke that. Stand in the power of God. Develop understanding through the word of God. Walk in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm. Develop confidence that comes through faith. That you can accomplish the assignment that God has given you. And it says to you and me, Mount Nebo, if you have raced with men on foot and you're complaining about that, how will you compete with horses? And if in a safe land you're so trusting, what will you do in the thicket of the Jordan? God's answer to a complaining saint. God loved Jeremiah. He was his boy. Knew him from his mother's womb. But gently, he took his servant and had to remind him who he was and who he was. I'm asking that he'll do that for us today. Remind us who he is and who we are. And remind us of the assignment that he's given for our lives. Oh, Lord God, our Father, we thank you for this day of sharing. I thank you for the awesomeness of your word. I thank you, God, for loving us, for coming to us in the midst of our weakness, reminding us that worse may come But if you abide in me, you'll be more than able to deal with what comes after this. But if not, you won't be able to run, you won't be able to stand against the horses. But if you just hold on to my changing hand, that whatever comes at you, you'll be more than able to deal with you because I am with you and I'll never leave or forsake you. Lord God, keep us and we shall be kept. God bless our sick far and near, that they, may, that they may walk in thy healing, in the children's bread. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Well, I give us a closing number and we'll prepare to go home. It's giving time. We'll give our offerings as we leave baskets at the door. If You can't contend with this. How are you going to deal with that? He birthed us to be his examples on how to walk in the swelling tide. He birthed us that men may see in you his power and his ability and his glory. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for your prayers. And again, good to see our visitors. God bless you. Good to see you, George. You know the rest of it. Mother home to be with God. God bless you. There's any strength at all, it comes from the strength in God. Amen. God bless you, sugar. God bless you. Be well. Be well. Lord, I lift your name on high. You still have your mother, Jenny. Lord, I